for it and Sammy needs to do because the bowling has been genuinely good you have to respect that what they need to do is to try and pick up the ones in the pools and when they really get that bad delivery you put it away you can still get five six seven runs and over they have to play sensible cricket rather try to slug away out of the situation As Forrest gets another single, one more left in the 13th over, 61 for four, the rate 4.75. Darren Sammy won man of the match last night for his innings at 41 and a couple of wickets, he led the way. She was jumping and dancing, having a great time. He was going to pull that, but then he checked himself and decided not to play it across the line. over so far from Pramal. Just one in four balls. So he's tightening it up. That should be wide. Yeah, called wide by umpire Gregory Brathwick. That's why, well, or maybe the bat, that's why they appeal. What? Well, if it touched the bat and caught it, he would have been out. So it must have touched the pad. That's an exceptionally wide delivery. That should be two. Besides the two wise, it was not a bad over. 14 gone now, 71 for four.
led by Jacobs. Early wickets, two for 12. And Barnwell, although he has not picked up a wicket, has been very tight. The loose link has been, I guess, for more. Speaking of umpires, that's perhaps one of the better ones produced in the Caribbean. Dominican Billy Dottrop, and to his left is Tony Howard, who works with the West Indies Cricket Board. Billy, of course, is here helping and assisting the development of the umpires. There's a 23-year-old umpire in the mix, so I guess he might be working more closely with him. And Barnwell is going to come back. Two overs for just uh, six runs. So Barnwell comes back for a spell. With six, to, with six overs to go, the winners need to step up now. We, and of course, try to avoid losing further wickets. And it seems to be the plan of talking down the summit. That's a good shot. Back past the bowler. Split both long off and long on. And it's all feeling so quick. They didn't have a chance. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. He hit that with, it, with some ferocity. And uh, the long off and long off field didn't have a chance. And they were quarreling with each other. It was no one's fault, really, but it just went so quickly. Quick single. So five off the first two. Good start. They need to go at least at ten and over. Final overs are going to be so critical to the winners getting to a respectable total, a total that they believe they can defend. He's put that in the gap. Can run him. They'll come back in a second. Seven runs from the over, still three balls left. Winners beginning to look up just a bit. Last score is 24 from 18. Sammy a run of all 14. They must get at least 135 or 40 to feel like if they have something to work with. I think anything under that is a joke. single, one ball left. I think this is going to be a big ball. A four or six or will Sammy chance his hand. in terms of the all-round cricket. They need 10 and over, and they got it there. 
but it could have been anyone for five. Sammy needs to still play a sense of the game. Yeah, thanks, Barry. Yes, Boris has been one of the, I suppose, the redeeming features of the top order of the Windward Islands batting. And driven 30 runs now. Darren Sammy. Liam Sebastian, but more Darren Sammy has been the constant Fazir Mohammed in the Windward Islands. I hope I didn't say Leeward Islands just now, I can't remember. The Windward Islands getting to this point in the competition where they can, if they win, get a place in the playoff. Over the last two years, they have been in the semi finals but couldn't go on. Now well, at least they'll want to get to that stage again. Gotcha! No chance of Bishu catching that. Unless he was Superman. But he can't Superman in the stands, giving us some color commentary. Easy two. And I think he's run out here. Throw to the non strikers and hit the stumps. We're going to confirm it, but that was a direct hit. And Lespris was coming back for what Sammy said was an easy two. I think he's lost his wicket. Yeah, brilliant feeling. Exactly as we always say, but more importantly now. That Ghana gets a wicket because of the danger of this partnership and the pace at which, at which Les Boris was going. Definitely out. Leon Johnson, the fielder. And that was a desperate wicket for Guyana. Gone. Played well, Les Boris. He has done, but it's now 83 for five. Sebastian as yet Lyndon James has come to the crease. A powerful hitter we've said over and over again, but really hasn't had too many opportunities to show that so far over this fortnight. No better time than the present. Miscued. Again. I'm not sure that you could have heard the calling on that occasion. A nice throw. Well, he's bowled him off his pads. And the Devendra Bishu almost. An exhalation of relief, but he's certainly on target today. They really fired up Diana. Bishop has bowled well. Out of the front of the hand, it looked like a little flipper and skid off the pitch. And it's the end of Lyndon James, 84 for 6. That got the Windward Islands going, but here it's much later in the piece. And they are the ones setting a target and they're struggling. They're really struggling to win with Ireland. This has been some stifling, strangling, disciplined cricket by Guyana. They're playing real professionalism against the home team. Yeah, just on to James much too quickly. 
In fact, I had a little chat with Bishu as I was coming off. He came up and he asked, you know, what sort of ideas, what sort of thoughts he, he should be portraying, how should he execute tonight? And it was a case of not really flighting the ball too much on this pitch because there wasn't a great deal of turn to be gotten, but more variation as opposed to any bowling entry. And I thought he could have flighted it a lot more. Here, the ball is skidding on, and I think he's bowled very well so far. Almost at the point of no return, but fortunately for him, Shimran Chandapol had some ground to cover at short fine leg. And see here, almost slipped. Struggling to understand what Devendra Bishu is doing. 16 overs gone, 84 for 6. Then to cut loose, 18 of 17 balls, just 4 overs left. Deliveries running out. Guyana very, very disciplined. Six bowlers used, and they've all played their part. Two wickets apiece for Jacobs and the Bishu. And uh, right now, Guyana holding the advantage. Can't say if it's decisive as yet, far too early. And someone who, I would say that uh, Ian Bishop is pretty much sweet on, runs for Deaton. He's going to come on for his third over, over number 17. Tough task here now against Sammy. This will test him. Miscued out towards long off. Catch should be taken. Stephen Jacobs takes it. What a response from the bowler. He was smashed for six by Sammy. And then second over. And now Jacob is having an inspired match. Shows his confidence with a comfortable catch. You can't feel more proud if you're from Ghana. Four runs for beaten. 20 years old. Smashed in his last over for a six by Sammy earlier. And he hits the right length. I thought he was a little too short continuously in his previous over. He gets rid of a danger man. 84 for seven. Definitely silent, but uh, certainly a numb feeling around the ground with the demise of Darren Sam. Shane Chillingford might be able to bring them back to life, but it's going to be extremely difficult. All of the Guyanese bowlers have really been focused. My ball. Look at the wicket again. What was good about it? The length was very good. It wasn't too short so that Sammy can play the short arm pull, and it wasn't full enough for Sammy to drive it down the ground. In fact, it was probably the perfect length that it hit high up on the bat. So, another good building block for this young fast bowler out of Guyana. He showed good variation with his slow balls as well. looking for new ways to say the same thing but would it be all right to refer to it as looking for the goldilocks length not too long not too short but just about right you can say anything except good areas of which i hate hearing now so if i want to get you out of the commentary box i said to maintain their momentum they need to bowl in good areas that that would have find me hanging from the rafters later on in the night There was a sound. Might have been the pad. Christian really wasn't going up with the appeal, in fairness to him. Well, you have to think pad because it was a loud, a loud noise.
This could run away. Yes, it will. Third man long footed. I don't think he picked up the ball at all. He was rushing in and the ball was heading away towards his right. It's what we call a sweet shot. There was no effort in the shot from Schilling Point. Look at this. Just stood on top of it, stood on top of the bounce and guided it. I must say that Schilling Point's back foot was very close to the stumps in the execution of that shot. And I saw it from side on. distance in it. Is that look out of a little today we saw Rustin Chase stepping back uh, on his stumps. That was yesterday. And flags being waved as you would expect. They're doing extremely well in limiting the Windward Islands after the captain won the toss and decided that he would chase. His team would be in the field first. Looking to go over the top, outside edge. Eight runs off over, number 79 runs off the over. 93 for seven. Doesn't feel as if it's going to be enough with three overs to go. Those three wickets there falling in a couple of overs have certainly not really allowed the Windward Islands to progress in the way that they would have imagined. And they're on the ropes, someone just said that Windward Islands are on the ropes, but they're not knocked out just yet. We've seen such strange cricket in this tournament that if Sebastian and company could probably, in three overs, get it to around that 125 mark, it's still a very good pitch. But the cricket sometimes has been a little bit strange and runs on the board, scoreboard pressure can do strange things. So Ghana cannot sit back here and think they're on the ropes. They're not knocked out. You have to finish the innings, Mr. Barnwell. Finish the innings strong. This is the last of his four overs. It just as an aside, all of that dancing in the stands that you've been seeing, it makes for wonderful images for you wherever you are in the world, but it's got the authorities concerned because we've been hearing announcements over the last few minutes warning people about the hazard of occupying the, the, those aisles and to move out of that area and fill up the other stand. And they certainly, some of them have listened and have moved out and filled up those areas. But still, as you can see, it is a danger. We tend to think here in the Caribbean that it's all happy and nice and nothing will happen. And more than likely, nothing will. But I think it's important for us as Caribbean people as well to understand when it's important to keep issues of safety in mind. Yeah, they call it health and safety requirements. And really, there should be stewards, a number of stewards going around there ensuring that the aisles are clear. And he's skewed again. I think right now it's the health and safety of the Windward Islands that a lot of people are concerned about. Will they get enough runs on the board to be able to defend? It's uh, the batting of uh, Schilling Project that they'll be more concerned about. Bringing up the 100 as well. 
What a great choice of a delivery from Barnwell. He kicks the ground after it's smashed. Everything was wrong with it at this stage. It's short, it's wide, and there was pace on it. That is what Schillingford is looking for. It's what Sebastian will be looking for. So you're either taking pace off it or you're going Yorker length. Very ambitious. Might have just uh, kept his eyes properly on the ball. Two overs left, 101 for seven. Just haven't been able to get the ball away. Seven fours and three sixes so far in the innings. It's a good pitch, fast outfield. Now this has been some excellent bowling so far by Guyana. Limiting those scoring opportunities, limiting those boundary hits. dancing around a bit too much and that was a variation offered up there by Ronsford Beaton that's why uh, I think he he's learned fast and he continues to learn quickly took pace off it you can see his fingers coming down the outside of the ball and that's why it's gone through on the third bounce to the keeper another swing and a miss Really hard for Schillingford. Schillingford is not the worst striker of the ball. What's happening here is that he's going across the line. Sure, he may have had to hold a shot a little bit delayed, I should say, because of pace taken off it. Now there's a change in the field because of that. The fine leg is going back, mid off coming up. This beaten pull is length back here now. Strike three. He should be out, but it's cricket, not baseball. He's swinging for everything, but not really keeping that head still, as we spoke about in another context. As a bowler, we saw Bish analyzing it earlier, looking at two Jamaican bowlers, Sam Toki and Cottrell. For batsmen, it's the same principle. Just the single. Extremely difficult to see the Windward Islands defending whatever is left, even if they have a really gargantuan final over. Guyana will feel that they've done the work in the field. Just another single, only three runs off the 19th over, 104 for seven. Runs for beaten, two for 25. Yeah, good stuff from Runs for Beaten. He should always, I think, be, well, mostly be in this kind of sport. Particularly given his age, you want him to grow, you want him to learn. And the more experience he gets, will be the better for Ghana across T20s, but also across the longer versions of the game. And I really do hope that there is someone in Ghana capable of continuing the work that has been started with him at the very foundational levels. Are we seeing the emergence of one talent? Are we seeing the re-emergence of another? In the Vidrabishu. He's really bowled well in this match. He's bowled well generally in this tournament. Sweet brought him a couple of boundaries last night against Barbados. This is a different situation. And I think you're seeing the confidence coming back to Devendra Bishop, which had disappeared after a while on the international scene. It's about believing you can do whatever you want to do. That you can bowl it just the way you want it. You can attack the batsman. 
and he's gone right through him and through the keeper. Yeah, Bishop can't believe it, but there's nothing that Christian could do behind the stumps. It's probably exactly as he would want to deliver it. Maybe just a touch straighter, to be honest. Let's give it a run, so I assume it's come off the bottom of the bat. They've got to get something off every delivery in this final over. And then steal themselves to believe that they can defend it. Will this fall of Spain and the slower and lower pitches you back? Because we saw that over and over again. This is a different situation, different surface. Looking to push for two. Leon Johnson with the return. And Shillingford struggling to the non-strikers end up making it home. Johnson with the effort that ran out. Kenny Lesperis. Another reverse field. And he's got it well this time. Something that laugh to cheer about in the final over. The difference with this one as opposed to his attempt earlier was that there was a little bit of pace and this one was full. So he used the extra bit of pace as Bishy tried to fire it up into his feet. It's a clever shot. Last ball of the innings coming up. 12 runs off the over so far. Just the single, but 13 runs off the over. Is it enough? Is it enough? 117 for 7. The body language of the Windwards doesn't suggest that they believe it is. But whatever it is, they've got to defend it. Guyana have to get 118 to win. The first half of Guyana's job has been very well done. Excellent bowling. Much more energy in the field tonight than what was apparent yesterday. Bishu was good. Beaton was good. Barnwell good. One or two bloopers in the field, but all in all, they'll be happy with the first half of their performance. But there is scoreboard pressure now. 117, it's not a big total, but it's scoreboard pressure. Again, that top order of the Windward Islands. Persistent problems throughout the competition. And again, they went to the Sporus. And then a little bit from Sammy. And then Sebastian Schilling for the end. Six bowlers used. All did a decent job. Crandon, just two overs for 14 runs. But Bishu, Beaton and Jacobs, two wickets apiece. You know, the most economical of them, Steve Jacobs. Two catches as well. He's had a, a really good match so far. But it's only the halfway point. And still, even with Diana needing 118 at less than a run a ball, there's 20 overs of cricket that could go either way. We'll be back after this short break. <laughs> Welcome back, the data flag flying high, so too the solution, but what will happen at the end of the night? Whose flag will be flying higher? Will it be that of the Windward Islands or will it be the Guyanese? Well, the questions will be answered soon. The Windward Islands are making their way out to the middle. 118 is the target. Let's join our commentators now. Ian Bishop are with him, Darren Ganga. Windward Island their way onto the field. They will need their best game in order to qualify for the playoffs tomorrow. Their total with the bat was not as significant as they would have hoped. And Guyana will feel that they're in with a good chance. Derwin Christian at the top of the innings. was circumspect when he started yesterday and then he blossomed Shipnarayan Chandapol. I still don't feel that he has fulfilled his role in this tournament yet. 
scored a 50, but he has not yet finished off an innings for Guyana in the way that he would be hoping Guyana would be hoping. But we have a very, very good chance here, Guyana. Could the sleeping giant be awoken here? 118 to get off their 20 overs. Darren Sammy leading the attack. He's been brilliant with the ball and the bat as well. But he swung this new ball with very good effect. The pitch is still good. And Darren Ganger's alongside me. Hello, Darren. Good evening, Ian. And there are a lot of people in the stands to wake up the sleeping giant of Windward Islands. This is their only hope. Both teams, in fact, the only chance here to move forward. That away movement is there. Still there for the moment. Yep, you're right. And generally, that is what he has done with the new ball. I just feel on this surface, the length that he bowls, he gets an added bit of bounce that makes it uncomfortable and difficult for the batsman. That is what has accounted for some wickets early with this new ball. That's a good single. It's a good single taking down. You need a lot of this. They cannot just sit back and depend on boundaries. And this man, Shiv Narayan Chand, the ball, he's very good at working the ball. Whatever version of cricket he plays, whether it's test cricket, 50 over cricket, or T20 cricket, he's one of the best maneuvers of the cricket ball. Let's see how he goes today. Sammy has to pitch the ball up to Chand, the ball. With that in swing, he has to pitch it up. There'll be a risk of a drive or a flick. Little full. I want him to be a little bit full. Don't allow Chandapur to sit on the back foot and negotiate movement off the pitch. Come on, guys. Everybody, everybody here, guys. Come on, I'm guys. I'm not sure that the Windwards can set out to defend 118 runs. They have to get wickets. opportunity full toss, toss outside the line of the off stump and Chandapur not being able to make contact probably not seeing this one he's just come to the crease and he's catering for that ball swinging back into him this occasion not able to make contact James has kept well too. And I say I don't think you can just sit back and defend. I don't think 118 is something you can say drop ball, drop ball for 20 overs. You have to create pressure by getting wickets. Good length. Slip has come out. The offside is now packed. First over, one without loss, in fact two without loss. The lovely views here at the Borsejou Stadium. The lovely island of St. Lucia. And we've got a big crowd in supporting their team, the home team Windward Islands. How they wish and hope for a Windward Islands victory tonight. But this button lined up. Can't deny them. Sawan, Deunarang, Barnwell, Crandon. Guys who are very capable of playing a good innings and getting their team home. I apologize to the viewer. I said one without loss and then I saw the ticker turn over to two. I know it's gone back to one. So it means that I've pummeled our graphics man into submission. And he needs some ice on his ribs. It is one without loss. Keep 
but we've gotten accustomed to seeing uh, Maturin bowl the new ball and arm the ball into the right-handers. I'm sure it's going to move away from the left-hander and he's used that delivery as a stock delivery with good pace. On rare occasions, he's tried to spin the ball. That is one area of his game I think he needs to balance a bit. Yes, use his arm ball, but also try to spin some deliveries. Delivery, not a great delivery, short and wide, very well played, Christian. Every boundary and every run will put that pressure back in the Windward Islands with a small total. It was wide, and Maturin bowled is from wide of the crease. And Dylan Christian, he's known to be someone that will stand back and wait to pounce on short deliveries, whether it's a pull or a cut. On this occasion, it was a cut through the offside in the gap. So he's looking to bowl, Maturin is looking to, on, to find on, the right length as well, he does that ball that drifts in significantly to the stumps. It's gone through as well, not tied to perfection, they're gone for two. Oh, and they take three, but just at the half width point of that third run you thought a, a bullet throw and Chan Nepal would have had to put in a dive yes you're right Shit. Bish Chan Nepal labored a bit from getting back for the tree a more powerful throw would have done the trick it probably offered an opportunity to Windward Islands to get a run out it was not to be good positive running by Guyana He's not a young man, by no means, but the mind and the willpower is still there. Ten without loss. They haven't lost an early wicket, so in that context, it's good. The run rate is about six runs per over. Well dispatched. Because it's a field that is catering for that away movement, the length allowed Christian to pull it through that leg side. And as well, Darren Sami, who generally bowls a fuller length. On this occasion, the ball stood up and offered Christian enough time to swivel on it and hit it to the backward square. Come on, Sammy. Come on, Sammy. He's got to make the adjustment. What sort of shot was that? This is risky business. Yes, looking to tug on the onside. 
Guyana will have to be mindful of obviously that Darren Sami he's picked up early wickets for Windward Islands and if they can probably blunt his first two overs it will put added pressure on him as a bowler and him as a captain as well well that is middled significantly middled just short of the boundary I think and it wasn't even that short yeah it's gone for four risky shot it was straight but I guess that is what doing Christian is expected to do at the top of the innings take the attack to the opposition there's immediately a change in the field a guy is being placed out at a deep backward square at the expense of the guy on the offside sweeper boundary Yeah, good point, Darren. I, I remember if we throw our minds back to yesterday, viewers who would have tuned in would have, would have heard me mention that I thought that Christian took too long to get into his stride, that Ghana's batting is deep enough that Christian should be given that license in that first six overs to be very aggressive, but sensibly aggressive. So I think he's chosen the right options so far. It's not a great average and his strike rate doesn't suggest the type of talent or the type of danger he can be in the right conditions. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. This is exactly what Guyana needed, off to a flyer. The slower delivery wasn't on target. Well, that didn't come out right. Darren Sami is normally accurate with his slower deliveries. This one turned out to be a full toss down the left side. And Dewan Christian, he's concentrating well. His shot selection. Have been great so far in this innings. He's got to continue playing with that sort of concentration. Well done by Delon Johnson. That could have gone for a couple of runs. So three overs gone. It's 23 without loss. But this is good, we spoke about pressure. And the team that goes on to win tonight is a team that will be able to handle the pressure better. It's a do or die situation for both teams. And immediately, Guyana and Despair, they've transferred that pressure on Darren Sami and his team. It'll be important to see how they respond to that pressure. They've got a small total, only 117. They've got to get wickets to put them in contention of winning this game. I'm very interested in seeing Darren Sami tactics in terms of a captain. And I say that because Many a times we've seen after the first six overs, the field spread it out. I don't think he has the luxury of doing that today. He's got to try and keep his fielders inside and create pressure to get wickets. I'd like to see how he goes about doing that today. Yeah, we keep an eye on that. I'm going to see when he brings Dillon Johnson into the attack because I think... He has to look to DeLon Johnson as a, as a, a, a wicket-taking threat, a wicket-taker. Yeah, four tough balls from Gary Matthews. That's the energy here, guys, come on! Finish, finish, does Christian on, have the head to say, okay, that's gone, it's, it's not a disaster, or does he play a big shot? Good choice. Yeah, what is important to see and to, to find out from Darren Sami's point of view is who are the bowlers he will turn to to get wickets for him. And you mentioned Johnson. I think young Sebastian, he's picked up crucial wickets for this Windward Islands team in the past. 
So he's got to try and get them on as quickly as possible to effect some sort of stop gap measure on this guy and a run scoring. 24 without loss. Ship, he's only one from seven deliveries. Uh, Christian has done the bulk of the work, the bulk of scoring 23 from just 17 balls. And there's no rush. Chan de Paul is experienced enough to know that once Christian is going, his job is even simpler. He'll take the strike. Shane Schillingford in the attack. levels are low out there. I don't know if you heard him through the stumps microphone, but he wants his guys to pep up. this delivery to the cow corner fence. Second ball up. Obviously, I think it's been more oh, skewed towards batsmen in terms of it being friendlier for shot, for shots being played and stroke play. There's not much spin on offer. You've got to create pressure to get wickets. Oh, it's sort of it, having it, highlighted, it. in my view, Delon Johnson as, as my front on, row. My one concern with Delon is that the ball isn't swinging after the first couple of overs tonight and I don't think that he's an out and out quick. Should be another couple of runs at least for Shipner and Chan the ball. They are restricted to two. So that's my one concern. I think Delon, from the little I've seen of him, he's a strong bowler, but he's at his best when he's swinging. And this track, as you said, you've summed it up rightly. <laughs> well, you can say that now after the half the game is gone. He predicted before the result. It's not a result yet, that it will be Guyana. We probably needed to consult with him before we made our pick before the start of this game. Still early days yet. We don't know if he's right. But Ghana going well. 31 without loss. Why don't we just pop downstairs or let Superman come to us? Hey, let me tell you, we're down here with the father of our skipper, Darren Sammy. And let me tell you, must be a very proud daddy. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. Very fine. And, and, are, you, are you at all afraid of what's going to happen? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Are, are you afraid of what's going to happen or do you have confidence that we will win tonight? No, tonight we win it. We're winning. We're winning tonight, yeah. <laughs> we're winning. Confident we're winning. What makes you say that? Well, because we have the confidence that we win. We won it. There you go. So let me tell you, tell me a little something about Darren Sammy and how you feeling right now as a proud daddy. That's the first time I'm actually speaking to you. Tell me about it. Well, to tell you the truth, Darren is the best. Okay? He's the best. And we, all of them, are very proud of Darren. Right. Yeah. And you 
expecting nothing but the best from him tonight. And as far as you're concerned, we are going to win tonight. I want you to look at the camera and say, we are going to win tonight. We are going to win tonight. There you go, people. A word from Darren Sam, his father. Thank you very much. We're taking it back. Whoosh, we're out. <laughs> Whoosh, we're out. Thank you very much, Superman. That one fell just short of backward point and whooshing to the commentary box uh, Super Ambrose and Super Mahomet Sorry Vish, I forgot my leotard so I can't uh, fulfill that role That's a revolting thought, isn't it? That's a good hit That's not a revolting shot at all That's a very good shot by Gil and Christian and Guyana well on their way They certainly are. It's too short by Johnson. A slapped throw by mid wicket. With some degree of disdain, I might add. And the Ringworld at the moment looked a bit rattled. Can't seem to find a way to, to stop the flow of runs. I think they've looked very flat throughout. Even when they came out in defense of 117 to 7, you never got the sense that the urgency and the self belief and the urging on and the encouragement and the applauding. Basically, you've got to give credit to Guyana. They've stifled, they've limited, they've strangled, they've taken wickets, and now that they've come out to bat, they've been very purposeful, they're not taking any risks. Superman and others will be hoping for something.